Hello, if you've been lucky enough to stumble across this plumberparts.co.uk video all about how to change your kitchen sink and tap over from start to finish, then great, we're gonna be looking into that any second now. Before we do, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to our videos and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter where we upload and install loads of bits and bobs all the time. Hope you enjoyed the video today, guys, and hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James and today we're looking at this beast here for my mate Keith, who makes a fantastic cup of coffee. Well done, Keith. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, what we've got here is a sink and a half sink. We've got a tap on here as well. Keith has battered it uh, when it comes to sort of hard water and bits and bobs like that. Also, he's got an in sinkerator as well, which to be honest, I spend most of my time taking out of people's houses because now everyone's got green bins and all that. They don't really need to just sort of mash up all their veg and just put it down the drain. They can put it in their green bin and give back to the world so we don't all die. I'd just like to say throughout this video, there are gonna be cards available. It's a great idea that you click on them. They're available throughout the whole video and they'll enhance your experience of the video as well. We've got a poll appearing in the cards right now that's very much related to this job here. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Anyway, let's get on with today's job and I hope you enjoy the video. Right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn the hot and cold water supply off to your sink. It's easy on this one here. Our hot and colds are just at the back there. They go into flexibles as well, which, you know, in contrary to popular plumber parts parlance, I actually agree that flexibles under a sink, um, you know, a must nowadays, really. Uh, doing it in hard pipe with getting up behind the sinks and all that at the back with your grips and everything is a right nightmare. So first thing we wanna do is turn the hot and cold off. And then once you've done that, so open up the tap at the top and make sure that you've done it right. If you haven't got valves there, then you're gonna to have to go around somewhere else on the system, either by your hot tank or your combi boiler, or where the mains comes in, which is usually actually under the kitchen sink, but isn't on this house, and turn it off there. So the job that I'm saying you've got to do first is turn the water off. Now we've got the water off and we're happy with that. I've got that tap open up there. We know we've done that properly. We're just gonna slack it off. And really what I often do when it comes to this sort of thing is just take your traps out. Don't have them hanging there in the way because they're just gonna be a nuisance later on. And just sit them to one side. Make sure you as well that you tip them out because as you can see in there, we've got a bit of water in there. We don't want that. And as ever, don't tip it down the sink that you've just taken the trap out of. Right, so now we've got that bit out of the way, we can actually remove these two pipes here. So what we're gonna do, we've got two flexes up there, so I'm gonna try and slack them two off up there, and then we'll be able to remove that out without having to do loads of work to the pipe work either. Always gonna have a little bit of water coming out because it's gonna be a little bit in the pipe. That's just laugh. Right, so there we go. We've got our two connectors just taken off there at the back, so they're ready to lift off. We've got our insincorator out of the way. I'm gonna to have to take that off and put that on the new bowl and a half. But when it comes to this, your new uh, kitchen sink should be supplied with new ones of these already. So the next bit we've got to do is, if you've got some, you're gonna have little brackets like this that you're gonna to need to screw, unscrew down and then pull the bracket out. Uh, if you zoom out, you see what they do is they kind of clamp down the sink. Now we do have the complicating factor as well that the drain off is actually hanging over the top of the dishwasher. So sometimes what you might have to do is remove the dishwasher washer as well and the kickboard underneath if it's integrated to actually get to those brackets. See so what's a good idea with these, you just take the whole thing out of the way. If you try and flick them out of the way and keep them pushed out, they're just gonna get in the way later on and you'll be swearing. So as is typical, I've just taken them two off there and prized that up a little bit. And there are a couple of clamps under that integrated dishwasher there. So we've got to pull this kickboard off here, remove the screws around the inside at the front of the dishwasher, bring that out. Hopefully they've left enough slack on the cold feed and the waste for it as well. All this sort of stuff makes what seems like a nice easy job. Some people might message me at Plumber Parts and say, how do I change my kitchen sink? It's like, well, come on, mate, give us some Give us a chance. So you go, there's the clamps there we're talking about. So we're just gonna slacken them off and take them out so it looks a little bit more like this. So there you go, they're in there now just like that. They've just all been taken off. I've even taken off the bottom clamps. Don't flip them out of the way because they'll just get in your way in a minute. So now that we've got all those clips on there done, if we have a quick basic overview before we took this out. As you see, I've prized it a little bit already. So we've turned off the water and removed our water connections. We've taken out the waste 
Um, and obviously there's a macerator on this one here, an in sinkerator. So we're now ready just to lightly prise. Now I'll give you a bit of a tip here really. Try to hold on the inside there, make sure you don't get cut. Make sure as well that if you are going to use a screwdriver to lift one of these up, try to get it right under there so you don't damage the worktop in a visible place. It's not, you know, it doesn't matter if you give it a little score just under there and no one's going to see it. It's not the end of the world, is it Keith? No. So look, I mean, look how easy that's come off. With all that prep work we've done there, just come out nice and easy. Just gonna lift this out like that. And there we go. Ready for our new thing to go in. Oh my God. While you've got the old sink out, just give everything a bit of a, a rub down. It's always the difficult side of any plumbing job, taking out the old. As soon as you've got all the old stuff out and you're putting the new stuff in, new stuff always goes in a lot easier usually. That's what I always find. And similarly, when you're soldering onto old pipe, when you're connecting onto old pipe, they're always the places where you might get a little bit of a leak. So always keep a good eye there as well. Oh. If you want to learn how to solder copper pipe and all that, there's a card appearing right now, and that's there throughout the whole video as well, guys. So you can click on that at the end if you want to know a little bit more. If you're fond of sand dunes and salty air. The next part of the job is to prepare the new one for going in. Don't just bang your new sink in there straight away. Nothing ever came out of banging quickly. Banging quickly always ends in disappointment. Anyway, so as you can see here, we've already got our clamps actually nicely fitted on here already. Someone's cared. So you can see there, all you need to do is make sure that your clamps on the inside like that. This is the same for loads of sinks made like this. You just pop that down in there onto the slot and you feel a nice little firm click. And that's in the right position. Look at that. Right, so we've got a little blank here as well. So select, so you always have two holes in one of these. You've got a hole at the front and a hole at the back, depending on which way around you want to orientate your sink. Right now, because obviously this is a sink and a half, they've supplied two of these, okay? Now we only need one because we're going to be putting the insincorator on. So the overflow on this, because we've got the insincorator going on here, it's not going to have the capacity for an overflow to go into that part of the waste. So we have the overflow coming off the sink and a half, but going into the waste of the full sink. Pull this little bit out the way grab yourself a slotted screwdriver these don't need to be done up crazily tight because they go on rubber so you're just going to pop that under there and i just want to make sure as well that you've got your little foam inner just here on that side that's going to go on the sink side we pop that under here with our finger on there rubber on there and then the actual piece like that we know this is all going to be okay and we're just going to do this up hand tight for now You can see it's just coming up through there. So now what we've got to do is just grab yourself a screwdriver, take off the decorative fascia that you've got on here. This is going to go on the inside. Right, so the washer sits on here like that, and they usually have a nice little lip for it to sit on there. And then this can actually sort of twist around to wherever way you want to orientate it. And to be honest, a lot of the time as well, it's good just to actually measure this and cut it off so it's in the right position. All right, yeah, again, just tighten that up hand tight. As you can see, we've got that on there now. And it's just a matter of popping that on like that, get that to work down there like that. Get as much of it pushed on as you can. Right, so obviously if you've got another one of these to put on, then just repeat that. And if it's not the one with the drain off on it, just pop that bung in there. So now what you want to do, now that we've got these two on at the bottom here, we just want to make sure that we get our tap prepared in the right way. Follow the instructions that came with your tap. We've done videos on how to do uh, pillar taps before, single pillar and twin pillar. So if you want to know how to do that, then search our YouTube channel. I'm going to say with certain types of sinks, right, it's a good idea to get one of these to go on the underside of your tap because that kind of stabilizes the tap from wobbling about. Because let's face it, it is on a thin little bit of metal that it's going into. Right then, so the sinks are ready to go on. I'm just going to flop this out of the way. We should just be able to lay our sink nicely in here now. Make sure that all your clamps are flipped in so they don't get in the way in a minute. Should we just pop that down just there, like so. So before we continue and forget, just get in here with the top of our screwdriver and just give that a little nip up. If you need to, just grab the bottom there. Make sure that's nice and central as well. Well and ass indeed. Right, so obviously now what we've got to do is go back underneath here and get all our clamps tightened up and make sure this is nicely fixed down. Right then, so now what you're going to do is flip these down. Sometimes you're going to find that they're not going to get a grip on anything because they either haven't got long enough screws or just physically that's not, not what's going to be happening. So often, sometimes if you can't get any of these clamps on, your best option is to use silicone and actually weigh down the sink and then leave it for a day so it glues down properly like that. So yeah, but this one here, we can get a nice little clamp bit on there like that. Just run under here and then get our screwdriver and do that up and get that set of clamps down. So then what we're going to do is screw down. As you see there, it's still got a little bit of spring in it. So we're just going to push down nicely on there. 
There you go, you see that's now pulling that down nicely. Right then, so now we've got the sink on. Before we put a little bead of silicon around here, because I'm going to put a nice little real small clear bead of silicon on this, I prefer a tiny little bead of silicon around here just to make sure nothing gets into the cupboard. Um, so now we're going to get under here. We've got to put back on our little macerator, put back on all the pipe work under there. That's not really part of doing the actual kitchen sink itself, so you can just watch me do it nice and quickly. So there you go, all done, had to elongate that pipe there a little bit, but we're in, everything's on again, and now it's a matter of a bit of a clear up and a bit of a silicon. Now it's time, get a little bit of uh, clear silicon. I guarantee every plumber's done this with their silicon gun. Either they've pretended that it's a syringe and they're on ER, or that they are in the Taliban and it's an AK-47. So yeah, I'm just gonna run a tiny little bead long here now, make this look beautiful. Bit of blue roll, everyone, you guys have seen me do silicon in loads of times. Uh, those of you who subscribe, you know how absolutely amazing I am at it. So then, let's run a bead. Right, so there you go, we've got the new sink in. I hope that's given you a better idea about how to tackle the challenge of doing your own sink. As I said before, we've done videos on how to do waste pipe, we've done videos on how to do taps, we've done videos on almost everything, including how to get coffee out your customer, haven't we, Keith? Um, so yeah, I hope that's given you a bit more of uh, an idea about what you should do when you're changing your sink over. If you need any more help or any more information, please visit our website at plumberparts.co.uk. As ever, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done already by clicking in the card that is appearing right now. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter where we show all the people videos and photos of plumbing disasters that you guys have sent us. Anyway, I hope to see you in our next video. And remember everyone, if Mr. G was here getting his belly scrubbed, what would he do? He would hold tight. I'll see you soon, people. Bye. Plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice.